Welcome to The Real Appreciation Podcast. I am David Claire Bennett, and with me today is an acting coach, a producer, an actress, and a director. One of her most recent films is Miranda's Victim, starring Emily Van Camp, Luke Wilson, and Abigail Breslin, which is now streaming on Hulu. And hey, trust me when I tell you this, I watched it myself recently, and I cannot recommend it enough. Please welcome to the show my guest today, Michelle Danner. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you today? I'm very good, David. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. As I was just saying in the intro, I recently had the chance to sit down with my partner, Katie, and we watched your film Miranda's Victims on Hulu, and we absolutely both loved it. So go ahead and talk to me about your experience directing a film with such a star-studded cast with names like Luke Wilson, Abigail Breslin, to the late, great Donald Sutherland in one of his final films. Yes, this was uh, Donald Sutherland's last movie, and I was honored that he said yes and wanted to be part of it. And I can't even tell you the incredible experience of working with him. He was funny and such a big heart and you know really cared about the work about the story wrote me the most beautiful emails as a matter of fact i'm planning on framing it uh, he, you know um it was such a sad day when he passed away and uh you know but he he really was a storyteller and he worked until until the end and um I was lucky enough to have all these, yes, as you said, these incredible actors come and work on this story, which to my amazement, when it was brought to me, it was offered to me, was never done before. The story had never been told. So it's a gap in our history because like one the movie before uh, Miranda's Victim, which was The Runner, you know, in the first scene, the police arrests, you know, this young kid, you have the right to remain silent. I never questioned, where does that come from? You have the right to this and you have the right to that. And I had never questioned it. And uh, and then so it was really fascinating to learn what was behind the story. You just talked about learning and learning is something that you really don't really expect if you think about it when watching a movie. And this is a movie that you truly do learn something. And I can appreciate that a lot. Absolutely. And uh it was, we had a great shoot we shot in New Jersey, still, you know, dealing with COVID uh, and still having people get COVID and yeah. um, dealing with masks. As a matter of fact, I had a clear mask so Donald could see my face okay. and my lips. Um, you know, it's, it's just great to be able to tell powerful stories. This is what it's all about, the opportunity to be a storyteller and to tell as many stories as you know, as, as you feel are important that people, and, and not only important stories, but also entertaining stories. Right. I shot a movie myself during COVID, so I know the struggles. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I mean, some people, listen, I to see a play about COVID last night, and, you know, some people were very isolated, and it was very difficult, and some people were very creative. I was very creative. I was editing a movie and, and being affected by what was happening, and and my kids, you know, uh, one of my kids was graduating high school, so his school play was canceled. He did the graduation online, you know. So everything was upside down, but we learned from it. We learned from all of it. We always are learning each and every day. And hey, I want to segue onto something else here. I, just like probably everybody else watching or listening to this episode, am completely in love with one of the greatest art forms on earth I like to call cinema. So something I think is really special is how you managed to raise $1.3 million in a campaign to construct two theaters as well as an art gallery. So please, Michelle, talk to me about how you managed to create such a successful campaign like this. I think that when you're inspired, your inspiration is contagious and passion is contagious. And so I you know, fundraised. I went into people's kitchens. I'm not going to mention the name. Famous people. Um, I did get Steven Spielberg and Kate Capshaw to believe in the vision and donate. Um, and a lot of other people did. And so it was a labor of love. Um, and, um, you know, it, this is the same. I'm right now, I'm opening a movie studio um, here in LA. And again, you know, I'm sitting down and I am inspiring people to see something um, that we can build that's unique and different. 
than what's out there. I think that if you have a unique vision and you share it, um, you know, chances are you can make it happen. Something I love that you just said was that uh, passion is contagious. And that is one of the truest things I've ever heard in my life. So thank you for sharing that, Michelle. I also want to dive into your journey as an acting coach, which I think is so cool that you get to do that. You've worked with some of the biggest names in Hollywood, and we've just mentioned quite a few. What initially inspired you to become an acting coach? I started off as an actress. And so when I was in New York, I studied with Stella Adler, with Uta Hagen, with Herbert Bergdorf, with Bill Esper, with some of the greats in terms of acting teachers. And... You know, I realized, well, Stella was very dogmatic. My way is the only way. And so were other acting teachers. And I started to question that and went, well, wait a minute. You can do it this way. You can do it that way. Um, And this idea of, you know, there's just not one way to do it Mm -hmm. followed me in my life right down to having two kids and touring schools and believing in progressive education because things change. Things don't stay the same. And I hate this the herd mentality come to the middle and everybody be the same well everybody's not the same and so to understand uh uniqueness you know um of each artist and nurture that to me became the most essential thing to me became the most important thing um so i was um yeah, you know, I was lucky to study with great people, and I felt compelled, I think, to share it, to share it with this, this generation, with this new generation, but to share it maybe in a different way, not in a way that was dogmatic, because I hate that. I just think that today, uh, an actor today needs to really learn the craft in depth, and in order to learn the craft, you have to understand all the different philosophies that exist, and understand what they're about, and create what I talk about, which is your own little toolbox, your artist's toolbox, which I call the golden box, where you have the key. And not only do you put technical tools, you know, that you learn that help you to, you know, if you have a script, you know, break it down and create a character and make choices, but also lessons that you learn when you actually book the job, when you're on set, when you're on stage, and then life lessons, things that you learn in life, all of those go into that golden toolbox that the actor you know uses to to create with well as an actor myself who's worked in in quite a few movies i'm curious to know from an actual acting coach what separates to you a good actor from a great actor? i think it's a willingness to take risks it's a willingness to be bold to go for it i was i'm sure i can say this i was doing a movie in april in italy and uh, they had me at Italy when they said, you want to come shoot a movie there? And uh, I was lucky enough to work with the remarkable actress, Toni Collette. And, uh, you know, she was she was kind enough to come back from Australia. So it was, it was jet lag. And, but I was watching her work, and especially, you know, in those first days of filming, her commitment to the choice, her commitment to go for it no matter what. And I had a front seat to watching that excellence at play. And I think that that's really what makes the difference, you know, the willingness to risk it in the moment. Absolutely. The uh, various actors, as we were talking about earlier, I kind of like to think of this. I have this weird ice cream analogy. analogy. (laughs) I like to think of actors and different types of acting and different ways and methods of learning it as like an ice cream shop. You have chocolate, you got vanilla, you got strawberry. There's all different types. It doesn't take just one that fits all, you know what I mean? That's exactly right. And you and you take all those ice creams, all those colors, and you start to, to paint. You start to put together, you know, the painting, the canvas. And that is what creates the art. That's right. You coloring it creates the art. Being a director is hard, and I don't say that lightly because I've directed several films myself, and I hate it sometimes. And it makes me want to pull out my hair, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But I wanted to ask you, what do you find to be the most challenging part of bringing a script to life on screen? There's so many components to it. That's the challenging part. Is there just so many moving pieces? And it boils down to choice. It boils down to that. I mean, you know, you can start a movie a billion different ways and you can end a movie a bif- different billion ways. And, and on your way to telling the story, you can do it so many different ways. 
So you have to commit to choice. And choices are a lot. There's a lot of, you know, choices you can make. So to really have a vision, to have something that you want to say that's deep down inside of you, and to trust how you want to make it come to life. I know you're probably not going to be able to pick a favorite, but what are some of the most memorable experiences you have with any of your projects that you're the most proud of? Well, Miranda's Victim, you saw that. I'm pretty proud of that. It was a period piece that we did. Um, you know, that this extraordinary cast came to the table to tell it. Um, I had a great experience shooting it. I mean, all my movies, except maybe for the first one, the first one was painful. I made, I said that it was the equivalent of going to film school, like it was over 20 years ago. Um, but after that, I tried to not make the same mistakes as I moved forward. I try, I said, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail. As long as there are different mistakes, you can't keep making the same ones over and over again. So I try to uh, be varied in my mistakes uh, and, and learn from them more importantly. Um, but uh, I have been very lucky. I've really had some great creative experiences. Well, this show is very big on gratitude and appreciation. And one of the most important things that I do, Michelle, every day when I wake up, as well as before I go to bed, is I say three things that I'm grateful for. So I wanted to reverse that question and flip it on to you by asking you, what are three things that you're grateful for in your life right now? Well, I am grateful for my health, first and foremost. Um, because without that, you know, I never understood what that meant at, at your age. I certainly didn't. People told me that from when I was a child, you know, just be grateful that you're healthy. And I was like, okay, okay, well, I'm healthy, you know, so what? So <laughs> it never really computed for me. But as you grow older, you start to appreciate when you are healthy and you have a clean bill of health. Secondly, of course, it's my family. I have a wonderful family, two great sons that I adore and that, um, you know, are here and supportive and come on set with me. And third, I would have to say my creativity, that there's no surprise to you. <laughs> you know, I am grateful that I get to do what I love. Because imagine living in this life and not being able to do that. Absolutely. And you just talked about the bill of health thing. I'm about to be 29 and this past year has been full of health problems. So I know what you mean more than ever. Well, you know, you don't look 29. You could still play a teen in a movie. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Hey, where can people find you online, Michelle? There's an Instagram, you know, I think Michelle Danner LA, uh, Actors International, because you know, I have two acting schools, the Michelle Danner Acting Studio dot com and the los angeles acting conservatory which is a conservatory program here in los angeles as a matter of fact we have a, a great location close to culver city and i had a mural artist right you know on the walls if you drive from one side you say you can't uh spell art without heart and on the other side you can make art without heart well, um so yeah, and that, that's a good, uh, a good philosophy for our school and for our belief, you know, for the future, the future generation of actors. Before I go, what is some advice you would give to an aspiring actor right now? I would say to study a lot. I see it in my son who just recently graduated from USC. He went to, to school for theater and film at USC. And, and I see what he does. I see that he watches four movies a day, that he's an encyclopedia, that he watches interviews and podcasts, and he studies, studies, studies. Now, of course, it's helped him that I've taken him to the theater a lot, and we watch tonight, we're going to go see a movie. We're constantly going to see things all the time, exposed, go to museums, travel a lot. You know, in addition to doing, of course, taking acting classes and studying technique, but I'm just saying live, travel, see what's happening in the world, be affected by that, um, and read a lot. That's the last thing. So it's just not one thing. It's several things, right. you know, read, watch, and do, uh, but read a lot because that really will, you know, hook you into your imagination. I know there's so many great things to watch, get the Criterion Collection, listen to director's cuts, um, but, um, but reading, 
you know, really plunges you somewhere in your soul that nothing else, no other experience can give you that. Amazing words by Michelle Danner. I cannot thank you enough for doing this. I feel you have a lot of expertise that can absolutely help shape the minds of both aspiring actors, actresses, directors out there. So again, thank you again for your time and for doing this with me today. Thank you. I can see why your podcast is successful. Now I know. Thank you. (laughs) I hope so. Thank you so much for the kind words. I am David Claire Bennett. She is Michelle Danner. Until next time, take care, love yourself, and protect your mental health.